Alright folks, so I just wanted to do a quick video here talking a little bit about uh, toxic mushrooms, specifically death cap mushrooms, otherwise known uh, by its Latin name as Amanita phylloides. Now uh, my Latin's a little bit rusty so you're going to have to uh, please excuse me on that. Anyhow, the reason I was talking about this is if uh, you follow the channel at all, you'll see that uh, from time to time I do videos about different mushrooms that uh, I may have forged or taken pictures of out in uh, out in the woods while I'm out there hiking or enjoying nature or something along those lines. And uh, this has actually been in the news a lot. <clears throat> There's been a number of people who've gotten pretty sick and even died uh, from consuming these mushrooms. So here's an article that uh, was published in the Washington Post on June 3rd and uh, it's about a family that got very sick. Uh, they, they picked these mushrooms. They live out in California and uh, here you can go, you see uh, Amanita phylloides, better known as the death cap mushroom, has more than earned its nickname. And uh, they've had a lot of rain out in California, and actually this started back in December. And mushrooms or fungus uh, generally do pretty well in moist, damp uh, areas that have plenty of substrate. Now this particular mushroom is native to Europe and came over as certain types of trees or lumber were imported into the United States. On the eastern seaboard, it's uh, easy to trace them back to uh, European origins. Uh, there's a little bit of controversy around how they got into California, but it's generally accepted that uh, the ones on the uh, West Coast are, are from Europe or, or, or derived from European mushrooms as well. Um, and here's one of the things they say is that uh, they're actually uh, delicious. And they look like a couple other mushrooms, like a straw mushroom, for example, or a Caesar mushroom. I believe both of those are the Amanita family, and uh, they look very similar. And uh, they, they look pretty tasty. Anyhow, people go out, uh, they pick these mushrooms, and uh, maybe they mix them up with other mushrooms that are not uh, toxic, uh, take them home, cook them up, and then uh, that's where the trouble started. And so in this new federal report that came out, it said uh, 14 people in the Bay Area uh, became sick after eating these, uh, these mushrooms. And they say that uh, they taste good, you eat them, you feel satisfied, and then a few hours later, some violent nausea sets in. And then over the course of the next couple of days, folks get some organ damage. Uh, specifically uh, to the liver, your liver can shut down, and uh, you can have kidney problems, kidney failure. Uh, folks need to go on dialysis. Now, in the United States, there's United States, there's no approved uh, anecdote or antidote for these uh, for these mushrooms. They are testing some in Europe that they uh, have shown some promise, but in the United States, typically what happens is is that they uh, they wash out your insides with fluids in a hospital. It's really the only known treatment here in the United States. Some of these people who eat, they ate these actually thought they were going to be tripping on mushrooms, which uh, is probably not a smart thing to do either. But uh, three of the folks in California who ate these death caps needed liver transplant. Um, and according to the report, one was an 18-month-old girl. Um, it's my understanding that uh, the group of people who were impacted this time around ranged in age from eight, uh, 18 months to about 93 years old. Um, and what it says is that uh, this this mushroom does grow all over the world now. It's uh, ranges through China and um, in Asia, and it is responsible for 90% of fatal mushroom ingestions worldwide. So I think the real reason why I wanted to do this video is just to say that if you are somebody who is going out, and I get questions about, hey, what do I got to do to learn about mushrooms or go out and, and forage mushrooms? What I would suggest that you do is that you get good guidebooks and then go out with somebody who's knowledgeable. Maybe you can join a mushroom club. Um, but I wouldn't eat anything. Uh, I would strongly uh, say don't pick, don't touch, don't don't eat any mushrooms. Take some pictures and then and then learn about them until the point where you where you know what you're talking about or you know what you're looking at. It says here these mushrooms are large and beautiful and delicious and deadly, uh, with toxins that are not destroyed by cooking. So a lot of times when folks forage for mushrooms, uh, what they'll tell you is is that make sure you cook these before you eat eat them. One of the reasons is there could be bugs or uh, bacteria or something on those that, that can be killed through cooking. Uh, the other one is, is that cooking can break down many types of toxin in the event that uh, there is toxins in the mushrooms that you picked. Um, here it says the state had only received a few reports of death cat poisons in the past few years according to the CDC. Um, talking about California, but if, if you remember correctly, California has also been under a drought for a long time so it didn't really have the conditions to grow this mushroom but now with the the rain that's coming in um, the conditions are ripe for these things and are sprouting up everywhere 
Um, here it said, in the worst case, a young woman accepted death caps from a stranger who had been foraging in the mountains and prepared a meal for her family, guest, and baby daughter. Probably not a good idea to be eating food made up of mushrooms, wild mushrooms from strangers. Uh, That's not something that uh, we do at the Smoking Ape House. So then here we go, vomiting and diarrhea followed hours later, according to the report. But the mushroom's real danger is the liver, which it uh, stealth, stealthily destroys over a span of days. Uh, the woman, her husband, uh, sister, daughter, and friend were all treated at the hospital with intravenous hydration, which essentially flushes the poison out of the system. And then uh, here we go, the woman's sister needed a liver transplant before she left the, the, uh, the hospital, and so did the baby. I'm just taking a look, here's another article, and this is by the East Bay Times. Uh, the reason I pulled this one up is it shows some pictures of these mushrooms so you can kind of see what they look like. Uh, the cap generally will start out white and turns uh, to a, like an olive green to a brown to a tan. Um, if you take a look here, the uh, stalk is a little bit scaly, uh, kind of like a snake. And if you take a look here, if you can see where my mouse is, that's actually what's known as a partial veil or universal veil. As the mushroom grows, this veil uh, is covering the gills where the spores fall out uh, when the mushroom is younger. And uh, as it grows, the veil falls down and peels back. And we'll see that in some other pictures. Over here on the right side of this picture, you can see the veil as well as it's breaking away from the gills. Now, Amanita mushrooms uh, kind of sprout from something that looks like an egg. You can see it down here at the bottom, these two mushrooms. And that's actually called a vulva. And uh, the, that starts and grows underneath the ground. And then the mushroom erupts. I believe I got some other pictures of that. And as it grows, this veil peels back, and then you have your mushroom. So as you can see in this picture, uh, this, this person needs to wash their hands a little better. But uh, as you can see in this picture, these mushrooms do grow quite large and are generally referred to as toadstools. Let's see what other pictures we have here. As the mushroom grows, the top of the, the mushroom will actually invert and look like a dish or a bowl. And here you can see this mushroom is old uh, and is likely dying. You can see right here a little bit of the veil and you can see the scaly skin on the, uh, on the stem or stipe. This is a great picture uh, for helping you learn to identify these mushrooms. You can see the entire mushroom is intact and if you ever pick or even think about eating a mushroom, you want to have as much of that mushroom uh, available to you so you can do a complete diagno uh, diagnosis or analysis on that mushroom to understand what it is. So you want all parts. And like I said, these Amanita mushrooms come from this vulva structure at the bottom, which really helps in identifying them. Now there are edible Amanita mushrooms, but it's generally uh, a good practice to not fool around with any of the Amanitas because of the uh, potential consequences if you, uh, if you pick a bad one. Here's a little bit of a younger mushroom. Again, you can see the characteristics, the veil, the vulva. And then there's an older one um, when the cap has become inverted. And it takes us back to the original one. I'm not going to go through this article too much because it's pretty much the same, uh, the, the same report that I read before with just a little bit of a different, uh, a little bit of a different take or, or uh, perspective on it. Um, here it does say there were a lot of these mushrooms popping up after several years of drought followed by a very wet year. Um, and then it says the number of poisonings underscores the need for the public not to eat mushrooms to the wild unless you're an experienced mushroom expert or one verifies what you picked. So again, you know, I always say to people, because they'll see a picture I took or I'll be talking about you know, mushroom foraging and, they, and folks really find it interesting and want to get into it. And, and again, you, you can't stress enough about, you know, you really are taking uh, your life in your hands when you do this. Um, here is the Wikipedia page I pulled up uh, on the Amanita phylloides. And uh, I'll, I'll link this along with uh, some other mushroom videos that I've done in the uh, description. But this tells you a little bit about it, um, that it's known as the death cap. talks a little bit about its migration from, from Europe to the United States. It's got some pretty good pictures here. You can see nice green on the top of it, which will help you identify this particular mushroom. And uh, it talks about um, some famous deaths. These, these, a lot of people have died from these, including famous people. Um, for example, here, uh, Roman Emperor Claudius. Uh, in AD 54. Um, now some folks are claiming that they were actually assassinated by poisoning instead of accidentally consuming these mushrooms. Um, and then there, I believe there was a Pope, uh, Pope Clement VII, if I remember, was uh, also a victim of these particular mushrooms. Talks a little bit about how they got their name, how the Latin name is uh, derived. Provides some pretty good description of the mushrooms. Talks about the habitat. Uh, here is a, a what they say, a young death cap emerging from its universal veil. And this is that uh, vulva-like structure, and then the veil that I was talking about um, that is attached to the to the stem or stipe of the uh, of the mushroom. 
And then last, I just had another article on here. Um, I can link to this. This is a great website, mushroomexpert.com. Uh, this is a really good one for identifying any mushrooms that you see or just learning about mushrooms in general. Anyhow, just wanted to do that quick video and put it out there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, if you do like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe for more content uh, of a similar nature. Thanks, everyone.